welcome to the NBS Show, episode number 342. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Starscream. Hello, every pony. Hey there, man. How are you doing? Feeling a bit down after since that uh, trip, I guess. Oh, now, yeah. just being in a happy, uh, happy mood because I'm going to see some people again next week. Going to go back to Malaysia. Did you do a lot of traveling? Like what? The last time we met was two weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's cool. That's cool. Man, we, we didn't hang out that much because of the patients, but eh, can't be helped. Can't be helped. Yep. Kind of sad. But now am I. We get, to, we get to see each other again. True, true. One day. True. Yep, true. So anyway, also joining us today is Priordic MG. Oh, I'm going to call him Fine Chicken. That's why I see on his, what you want to call this, this court name. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello there, everyone. Uh, <laughs> hey there, man. It's like last time I joined the show was like I don't know a year ago. I think so. Yeah, Something. it's like what maybe longer because it's been a while. Oh yeah, it was after the Sea Pony Con. Oh wow, yeah, in Thailand. Yeah, that that was a while. That was a while. But how are you doing, man? I'm doing great, actually. Like I don't know, I have to go to work in a few hours, but mm, <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm okay. Does it sound like you're going to have fun at work? Yeah, I'm going to have fun at work because working alone in night shift anyway. Ah, uh, all right. Night shift is always fun, uh, except that you need to deal with the people. People are not fun. Yeah, sometimes. True, 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 true. But anywho, welcome back to the show, Chicken. Um, I hope you have fun. And the last time the team we met was at... Uh, Friendship Express in Kuala Lumpur, or is it Selangor? I I always get this thing mixed up, but <laughs> it's in Malaysia, and it was fun. It was nice meeting you again. Yeah, nice to meet you too, and thanks for having me. No problem, no problem. So anyway, let's get right into the news. First up, Kotobukiya Twilight revealed. Ha ha. So in previous news, we mentioned about the Pinkie Pie Kotobukiya coming out, and it was priced around ninety nine dollars, and uh, that hasn't even come out yet. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I saw it on the link on H- uh, Hobby Link Japan. It's costing around Singapore 132. Not counting in with shipping, I, th- I guess. Yeah, yeah. True, not, true. No, yeah not, not counting in with shipping. But the thing is, it's it looks great, I guess. Well, yeah. everything from Kotobukiya is always great. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I agree that. I agree with that because I personally have what you call this, uh, the... Um, I'm thinking, what do what do I have? Yeah, uh, it's the um, Marvel Kotobukiya Bishojo figure of Black Cat, and mm-hmm. that's cool. That, that's really cool, and that cost me a pretty penny way back when. And yeah, um, now that it's ponies, I'm reconsidering. But you know what? To be honest, guys, I might not be getting this. Why not? Oh, why not? Because of the price. See, it, <laughs> it, it dawned on me that. I'm spending about, well, let's just say a hundred US dollars on a figure that, mm-hmm. when converted to my local currency with the um, exchange rate that it is now, I think what one Malaysian sorry one hundred dollars is equivalent to four hundred and twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna cost me a pretty penny, and four hundred and twenty dollars can sorry four hundred and twenty ringgit could do a lot. In terms of food, toys, games, or whatever in between. Yeah, that is true. Damn, I'm sounding like an old. But man. you say you like your your currency is uh, a bit low, but like compared to me, that <laughs> uh, true that true that. But but still, I mean, it's one of those cases, man. Like you have to set your priorities. That's that's what I say. Yeah, that's true. But what about you guys? So you know, you know my stance on things. I, I might not be getting the Pinkie Pie or the Twilight. But what about you guys? For my case, I am not sure. I'm actually quite on the border on this. I mean, it looks great and whatnot. If I own it, it would be my first figure, I guess. Well, for me, I would like to have the figure, but I don't know. I still have lots of figure that I, I didn't uh, put out on a show yet because my small room size. <laughs> See, that's the thing. And also at the same time too, you, you don't really want to throw away the box because the box is nice and if you want to sell back those figures, you need the box to get the maximum amount of value. Yeah. Yeah. And that's true. Where do you want to keep those boxes? 
<laughs> yeah, I, I still have the, the, uh, the small figure of uh, the Takaratomi toy line of Star Wars mm. that I still didn't put him out of the box yet because <laughs> yeah. it's valuable. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. So that, that's, the, that's another thing. Um, yeah, it, it's sometimes those things, they get in the way. And uh, let's just say that money, if it weren't for money, I would have gotten Twilight and Pinkie Pie and all the main six. Yeah. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. Oh, especially Sunset. Yo, Sunset's hot. <laughs> yeah, they all look great. <laughs> yeah. But anywho, let's head on to the next news. And, well, from one Japanese company to another, not really, uh, the My Little Pony manga uh, information of it has been revealed. So, uh, according to uh, Amazon, the My Little Pony manga, A Day in the Life of Equestria, Volume 1, uh, it seems that this is a $10 or $11 book with 120 pages. And it's going to have a tentative release date of June 18, 2019. And the bullet point on the page here says the land of Equestria comes alive in this one of a kind My Little Pony manga spotlighting each of the main six and their planet of their friends. Is that right? Am I reading this right? <laughs> I think, I think, yeah. My Little Pony spotlighting each of the main six planet of their friends. <laughs> <laughs> it, it shows on the uh, description on the main. I, I know. It's like I know my reading is bad, but sometimes I'm wondering, like, hey, is this right? Okay, that's besides the point. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, that's besides the point. Um, writer is David uh, Lums Lumsdon, and mm-hmm. artist Lumsdon. is yeah Lumsdon. She yeah Shea? artist is Xie, I think whatever it is Xie. Yeah. And apparently this book is not coming isn't coming from Land of the Rising Sun. So huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so wait, basically it's an avatar? <laughs> yeah. I guess so. <laughs> uh, you, you know what that means, right? Like um Avatar the Last Airbender, it looks like a anime, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. Like I I own all the digital version of the book from uh, IDW. What for no, Avatar? It's not from IDW. Yeah, for Avatar, oh. not the ID. How how's the story by the way? It's uh, focused after the show's end of the, the first season of the show. Wow, like, that's cool. After he uh, uh, ten, defeated his, Mark uh, Hamill. Avatar, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, it's focused a lot on how they develop the relationship between the Fire Nation and, and everyone else. Uh, all right. I, I think it's worth a read if you're an Avatar fan. But mm-hmm. getting back to ponies and looking at the art here right now, it does look anime-ish with those sparkly eyes. Yeah, it, it would attract more, more like uh, anime fans. That True, true. I'm really looking forward to this, but it's come on, next year. Ah, come on. Here's the thing. Um, I've seen a lot of manga or doujins from uh, independent artists that mm-hmm. pop up online. And their art are not bad like uh, it's really nice and also the fandom here creates a lot of awesome art in terms of how they want it to be you could have um, anime or realistic or even cute style of ponies or or even show accurate so uh, having a quote-unquote manga book comic thingy coming out that'll be interesting um as per usual, the NBA show will review the book once it's out, and in due time, we'll well talk about it and stuff. I mean, that's what we do. If it's a comic book, we'll kind of review it. You know, I was looking at the Amazon uh, link, and then they were talking about the author. So, Shea is a New York Times best-selling manga artist. That has drawn over 20 volumes of manga, including Amazing Agent Luna Aoi Ao- House, Vampire Cheerleaders, and Avalon the War. Warlock di- Diaries. Hmm, okay. That sounds cool. So, yeah, Um, if you guys are interested, do check it out. I'm sure that this comic is going to be sold digitally via Comixology. That's how I usually get my comic books. So, I'm guessing you guys should, well, try and look over there too if you don't want a big paperback book. 
So yeah, that's one. I like physical good. stuff though. True. Like, I have true. lots of comic I order from Amazon and some other third party uh, comic selling website as well. The thing about uh, comic books, like physical comic books, that kind of turn me off is the place to keep them. That's the only thing. If I have a place where I could keep them, I would be happy buying them in physical copy. But sometimes when you don't have a place to keep them, it gets a bit, you know, underwhelming or disheartening when you buy them. The next thing uh, on your to-do list is buying a bookshelf. <laughs> I already have a bookshelf, but the problem is, I don't know, man. Like, I personally like the digital things. Like, I, I like looking at a screen. <laughs> But anywho, let's move on to the next news. And the next news has nothing to do with ponies or comics. I lie, it has to do with ponies. If it's not, we won't be covering it here. And Linus Tech Tips is a channel that I watch on a daily basis if they upload any new videos. And they're basically a tech channel. If you want to know anything about computers, go look over there. It's a lot of fun. And the only reason why I'm bringing this up right now, in one of their recent videos, talking about a Google Chromecast thingy, they have ponies in the background. Yay. I see you there, Twilight. Yeah. It's the, uh, the uh, what, what do you call it? Is it at the gala episode? Yes. Looks like it. It is at the gala episode. I think this is season one, blasted on <laughs> yeah. Netflix. Because I remember they have kids, and then obviously the kids should be watching MLP. Oh, yeah. Totally. And remember that time when he was flying? <laughs> he had pony in the background. <laughs> Whoa, boys. Uh, yeah, yeah. But anywho, uh, getting back on track, this one, this is kind of a not really big news, but since I watch LTT, it's something I want to talk about. So, yeah. Do you guys watch Linus? This is the first time I'm going to watch it, probably tonight or something. <laughs> you should. It's a lot of fun. And you were saying, Star? I was like, when I was watching this episode when he was uh, showing that the device, I was like, oh, hey, I was like, MLP at the background. I was like, hey, Twilight. <laughs> my, that was my first impression. I was like, oh, hey, tw- MLP. I see you, dead Twilight. <laughs> yeah, it was like, we kind of know that he was like, he's doing this kind of stunts like a lot of times now. No, not really. I mean... For this kind of thing, he just turns on Netflix and whatever is on is on. And basing on the account, I'm guessing it's his own account. And he, his family watch ponies because kids and whatnot. So it's going to be there kind of deal. And I don't really think it's a deliberate stunt to put ponies on screen. Yeah, it's, it's not. But there was a few times it was like do, make, making fun of things yeah. <laughs> about it. I, was like, I remember like you, he did that before. Yeah, but anywho... Let's move on to the next news. And the next news is a pretty quote-unquote awesome one. Because um, remember the episode Surf and Turf? Sorry, Surf and or Turf. Remember that one? Where Tyra Mar, Silverstream's sister, sorry, brother. Yeah, Silverstream's brother um, helped the CMCs do something. I don't know. <laughs> you haven't watched it? It's pretty early. Season 8. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking with two guys who didn't watch season eight yet. <laughs> yeah, we should have warned you about that before we do this. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, but but anywho, long story short, in this episode, uh, Silverstream, the hippogriff from the new s- student six, has a brother, and Twilight and the CMCs have to go to. Uh, whatever that place is called, to have some documentation signed. And let's just say that in this episode, Taramar is feeling a bit split because he has to pick between, or technically he has to pick between uh, living in the sea as a sea pony or living on land as a hippogriff. And the CMCs help him out and stuff. So um, the reason why I'm bringing this up because uh, it seems that uh, the episode Surf and or Turf is up for Humanities Award. Humanitas Award. Yeah, Humanitas Award. So, uh, the 44th Annual Humanitas Award honoring TV writers and stuff. It seems that this episode has been selected or nominated as one of their episodes to be um, talked about, something? Yeah, basically, it's, uh, it's to receive the award under the Children's Teleplay Category Award. Yeah. Yeah. 
And it's just been nominated for now because there's other shows like Muppet Babies, Zombies, Ooh. and also Alex and Kitty. So ponies are, <laughs> well, let's just say that they're not the only ones uh, trying to grab that award. And honestly speaking here, this is kind of interesting because first things first, what is the Humanitas Award? I haven't heard of it before. This is the first time I'm hearing it. And if it's what I think it is, this is kind of big. It's it uh, it's a big. bit like the what you call it, it's a peace prize, like but this one is more towards um like you know like Nobel Peace Prize, more mm-hmm. towards uh I don't know, film and television. Okay. Uh it, it's uh, okay, from what I read from the wiki it says uh award for film and television writing intend to promote human dignity, meaning and freedom. Ah yeah. So this does make sense, yeah. Uh well, I hope that ponies win because this episode was a lot of fun, and you guys haven't watched it. I I would highly recommend go watching it because it's a lot of fun. You know why we are putting it off for so long? I think for for my reason is that I'm still waiting for it to like to season eight to end, but it's already end. Yeah, I think a while ago, <laughs> but I didn't I didn't have time to watch it yet because I was so hyped preparing for the TFE the convention <laughs> well, that's coming like last month. Yeah. Well, now you so, kind of have time, so go go at it. Yeah, yeah. Probably tonight if I'm free. Yeah. Like at work. <laughs> I'm lazy again. <laughs> yeah. But anywho, on to the last news. And Chicken, you said you didn't have time. So let's add in more not time for this one because Equestrian <laughs> oh. Girl Season 2 is coming soon. And uh, Ishiro Del, the director for the movie, is hyped because he says that um, there's a song in the series that's going to be really, really awesome. Yay. Best songs ever, they said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, oh boy, so, mm, I- I'm trying to wrap my head around the concept of season two because was they ever season one? Mm. I don't think so. From what I've seen so far, I well, I didn't catch up on the Pony, but I did catch up on the Equestrian Girl. So I think it's not bad, I guess, season two so far mm, all right um but from what i'm reading here what they mean by season two is uh the shorts remember the shorts that we watch from um the one at the beach or the choose your own yeah. adventures those considered to be seasons oh everything right yeah yeah even with the uh, cancel lot short too right yeah yeah i, I think so yeah, the beach or whatever it is they're going to call yeah so mm. It's really unclear what considered as a season, but hey, I guess now we have a season. <laughs> so season two <laughs> is going to come out. It's going to be awesome. Uh, one of the few things I hope that they try and do with season two movie is introduce the sirens again, because come on, you have something awesome like the sirens and you're not doing anything with them. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's a shame like we only see them from the movie and not so much anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not tacos not tacos tuesday it's still it's still saturday today yeah <laughs> but still um besides that i do really hope that season two is going to be awesome and exciting and one thing i really want one thing i really want them to do is release an album release a soundtrack album for the show or the season one songs because I think it's been a while since we gotten any songs lately. They did release the uh the songs from the movie, right? but not the uh, from the shorts one. Yeah, um, if you're talking about the Equestria Girls one, two, three, and four, yeah, mm-hmm. those songs were released, but I'm more talking about the ones in the shorts and also. Uh, yeah, the shorts. The shorts have awesome songs, so I would like them to kind of release more, especially Forgotten Friendship. Remember that one where uh, what's her name was singing and then suddenly Sunset kind of interrupted her? Is, is it the girl with the green hair? Yeah. Something? Yeah, her. I don't remember her name as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess she did her job then. <laughs> yeah, she did her job. Like, she only appeared one short and then she's gone. <laughs> yeah. But no, um, see, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I want the songs. I, I really want to buy the songs. They recently released a score for the movie and awesome as that may be, 
It is expensive. That's all I have to say. Did they ever release any song from the Equestria Girl music video? Like the one with the Mad Scientist Twilight? No, they didn't. Or... None, none hmm. at all. That's what I want. Yeah, that would be great if they release it. I know. I would buy it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I would buy it as well. Digitally, of course. <laughs> yeah, true that. Like, <laughs> who here listens to CDs anymore, right? Yeah. It's all about the... it to Danny, though. <laughs> it's all about the finals, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, um, uh, putting that aside, I do hope that we get to see what issue Rodell is talking about. And I'm excited for this, too, because I like the Crash Regal series. I liked it, too. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I never miss any uh, the shorts, or we could call them Season 1 now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's just confusing. That's what they want to call it, yeah. Yeah. We just wrap them all up as a season one then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Star, uh, do you, have you watched this? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I forgot you don't like the Equestria Girls. Not really. All right. Then. So, anywho, that is the news. So, let's head into my favorite topic. And said topic is what have we been doing with our week? Star, what have you been doing, man? I have been uh, doing pretty much uh, busy research and whatnot and talking with Daniel and, what, and uh, things and that. And also chatting with everyone after the... Because, you know, con ends. And then we all had like our debriefing last week also and whatnot. I don't know. A lot of things, I guess. I, I remember the... What you call this? Debriefing or the whatever Doc wanted to call it. And yeah, it was really interesting. I, I remember that. That was what? Last week. We recorded that last week of, before we did the debriefing. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, I still remember what I did during my trip, and it was kind of interesting, I guess. Even though, like, it's already been two weeks, oh, I guess it's a what you call it's a it's a good memory kind of a week, I guess. Ah, all right, cool, 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 cool. I mean, like behind the scene, I mean, you guys seen all the what you call it, the front of the, as what you call it, the front of the, <laughs> the retrospective. There's also something known as the behind the <laughs> retrospective. <laughs> yeah, the one that we're not allowed to talk about. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yes. That involves a lot of booze. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's the other thing. Booze and yeah. uh, what do you call it? Game shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Jack yeah. Fox. <laughs> the Jack Fox. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but oh, anywho, boy. Uh, is, is that all? Is that all you did? Yeah, and then also uh, research on smart home stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I, oh, remember, home. I remember you talking about that. And Any reason why you're going to do that? I I guess you could say that was like already part of my wish list in um part of my room upgrade uh, things list. that I want to do yeah bucket list ah I mean I have a what you call it, the PC bucket list and I also a plush bucket list and uh, after after I did my PC I was thinking about smart home kind of thing mm-hmm. but rather than smart home this is basically smart room <laughs> so it basically my room only will have like Alexa running or Google Home. Oh. Okay. And then maybe like having like LED strips running around and whatnot. Because I feel like sometimes just like came into my room, it's like, oh, I have to switch on my aircon and then switch on the light. And sometimes it's like, I'm just lazy. I just want to ask everything automated, you know, make life easy. <laughs> <All> <laughs> I right. just want to be lazy. All right. So RGB everything then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> RGB everything. <laughs> well, not really RGB everything. Well, you could say RGB everything, but then again, another way I could do RGB is MB like project. Basically, mm-hmm. uh, how it works is that I install like something like a uh, table lamp or light LED strips to the back of my monitor or something like that, and then I could just sync it to the screen that I'm whatever I'm seeing right now on my screen. It will like sh- show that what you call it the M- ambience mm-hmm. light lighting. Yeah, ambience, ambience and, feeling. Yeah, Ooh. so it looks like very what you call it. Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Uh, good luck, man. I hope you succeed in this project. It sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's going to be fun. It's well, going to be well, fun and it's going to cost a lot as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's going to cost a lot. But then again, I did have uh, someone. So, it's, well, I mean, not in terms of monetary funding, but in terms of suggestion and whatnot. All right, all right. So, it's not that difficult. Yeah. And moving on to you, Sunny, what have you been doing this week? Well, for me, uh, after we got uh, we got that we did that uh, post mortem thing yeah. that I actually miss uh, miss saying that it's a post con mortem, but someone <laughs> actually tell me it's not the way that you call it. I don't even know what mortems mean. 
Uh, yeah. You know what? It's 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 Doc's way of uh, let's talk about the con after the facts kind of deal. But the problem is Doc likes to use big fancy words that nobody really likes to use. <laughs> It's more like medical term, yep. uh, post mortem. Yep. That, yeah. that is the term, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, as, yeah. as we normal people will call it, what happened? What should we do after the con or stuff? You know what? Okay, well, 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 talk, talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, we basically, yeah, summarize after the, uh, like the everything that happened in the Friendship Express. And after that, I've been mostly focused on work and trying to get my drawing back. I actually just finished the drawing of Danny's drawing, Danny OC, mm-hmm. Sent Pinky. Oh, God. I actually oh, finished nice. one. I'm probably going to work on more drawings after this because I felt like I, I'm neglecting it for for a year and a half now. It's okay, man. You're, you're working and stuff, so can't really do much about that. Yeah, uh, it will get rusty. <laughs> and of course, gaming. That's uh, <laughs> what oh, we my. live for, right? <laughs> oh, my. What have you been playing then? Yeah, uh, I've just been introduced to the Slate Slate of Spire. <laughs> okay, what's that? It's a card game. It's a deck building game where you use the card to beat up monster along the way. But when you beat them, you get a new card. So you decide to keep them or toss the old one out. So basically, it's a deck building game. Oh, yeah, to right. keep to help you progress along the way. Oh. I I think I remember talking about this uh last time. Mm-hmm. I think so. On the NBA show, yep. I remember talking about it. I was like, I was just mentioning that. Oh, I was watching uh, people on Twitch playing the game yeah. because that time it was like the game was early access, and now it, the game is uh, officially released. I, mm-hmm. I remember that. I remember that. And Sunny, you're one of the other friends that I know that plays card games. So, uh, have you been playing Magic? Magic, yeah, a bit, a little bit of it. I used to play it before, like. The old old block back in two thousand fourteen, I think. Oof, that but now be... since they introduced Sorry. the new the new system and the new card, new lands and all that, it's it's a bit more uh overwhelming. That I'm I'm slightly I'm going to get back to it because uh Dre actually introduced me to some of the uh, starter deck from from the new one and it worked. Oh well. Wow. So um, here's here's a here's a pro tip. If you really want to play Magic but don't want to invest a lot of cash, play Commanders. And Commanders, yeah, the hundred deck uh system. Yep, that uh-huh. that was much more card, fun. Yeah. That was much more fun actually. I mean, the idea here is you just buy one card and be done with it. You don't really need to get a play set. Uh huh. So it's much cheaper in investment. Well, talking about investment, I'm still investing on My Little Pony CCG a lot. I just played a draft game uh, a week ago as well. Wait, with friends sorry. Online. Oh, online. All right, okay. Because um, I was wondering, like, is the game active in Thailand? No, it's not. Yeah. The, like, no one in Thailand actually know this game. I, I tried to introduce it, like, three to four times. I even asked my, like, we had Thailand PonyCon, right? Uh-huh. I personally know the, the guy who is the head of Convention. Oh, uh, yeah. Like the one who organized everything. I asked him if I could do uh, the My Little Pony CCG panel or some of the Boots event. He actually declined me two or three times because he don't know what it is and he wouldn't want to uh, invest yeah. his time on this. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Um, Honestly speaking, uh, the Pony car game is hard. It is hard, yeah. I still play it regularly with the guys I met in, in Russia or you know you know that guy Hitrock or something his name something like that he's the the one who like managed the Quest Your Daily Discord server as well and and everything he still play card games a lot yeah that's the thing i mean uh, in the states it's easy to get them but over here mm-hmm. it's dead it's like non existent the only people who has yeah. it is like People in the fandom, like really deep in the fandom, like <laughs> me, Doc, and probably yeah, you and me as well. Yeah, yep. it's like us, us and then like we Th- those also. those who are more uh, committed into the fandom, I guess. Yeah, because I played some of it, and gosh, dang it, it's so difficult to get in. Like the learning curve is steep. Yeah, there are lots of still, there are lots of uh, rules that is not explain in the newer cards or we call it block we have a uh, 
uh, Premier Bob, that is the first block between one to the fourth uh, season deck. And then we have the Odyssey block, and then now we have Beyond block. So it's include all the Sequestria and the season eight card. Oh wow! The, the, and the movie. The way I'm listening to this is like this is interesting, but oh my goodness, I don't know. It's like Magic Gathering <laughs> all over again. Yeah, it is. It basically is Magic the Gathering, but it's. I would say it's different because it's pony, but the the concept of the game, like the cost and the the how you summon the friends and everything, it's basically close, really close. I would say seventy percent close to Magic. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Um, um ha- Pony is a Hasbro product, and mm-hmm. Wizard of the Coast is under Hasbro. Why not ask Wizard of the Coast to do it? Because here's the thing. Uh, there's also a Transformer CCG and mm-hmm. my shop is really pulling it in and I think it, there are a lot of people playing it. Why not ask Wizard of the Coast to do it? Oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, if, if there's uh, some, some more news about the uh, My Little Pony CCG, I would be happy to talk about it because the new, the new deck... Uh, the new set of uh, cards you will be coming out uh, in the next month. Oh, cool. Yeah. The only reason why I have interest in the pony card game is the play mats and accessories. Like, oh, those... Wow. <laughs> that, those are pretty good. Yeah. I, I actually I... gave out three play mats to <laughs> Young and Doc and Danny a while back. Man, I wish I had one. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get a new one soon, probably. All right, then. They said because I would really love to get those playmats. Like, oh gosh, oh well, can we can we help? <laughs> so um, yeah, they look pretty nice, right? Yeah, really, true, really nice. true. Yeah, I I have one that right now the one that gave by uh chicken and it's um it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's called the stained glass uh playmat. Oh man, I want yeah. that one. God dang it! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, when he gave it to me, I was like, uh, are you serious? You want to give it to me? I was like, uh, what? Oh man, I'm jelly. <laughs> I'm probably going to order a new batch, like maybe uh, next month. Oh, cool! It wasn't not it was not expensive at all, and but the shipping though, oh my uh, god, that that kills it. Like the shipping always kills it. Uh, but anywho, chicken. And what uh, and what makes this uh more interesting is that when I look at the brand who makes it, it was like, oh god, it's uh what do you call it? It's ultra the, pro. What what brand? Yeah, the pro Ultra, brand. Ultra Pro. Yeah, yeah Ultra, Ultra Pro. That brand. Ultra Pro now <laughs> does good products. Like, they have the yeah. Eclipse sleeves, and those Eclipse sleeves are awesome. The I'm best. Using the, I'm using the sleeve also for Netrunner. Yeah, it's, it's like I mentioned before, it, it's all good. But anywho, um, Chicken, is that all? Yeah, I think that's all I did the past week. Drawing, playing card games, games. All right. Yeah. All right. So um on to me and well it might sound a bit silly for some but it might sound fancy for others is that um on the day that I left for uh, TFE my area recently opened a family mart family mart yes wow I'm really jelly <laughs> I'm really jelly uh chicken you know about this right they have family mart in yes, Thailand yes. yeah so um, to explain what the heck is a family mart, it is a Japanese convenience store chain. The word like Seven Eleven, yeah, Seven yeah. Eleven, or um, I I think the best one is Seven Eleven for our foreign friends to kind of mm-hmm. latch upon. So yes, uh, mm-hmm. the the only reason why I consider this to be really fancy is because in family mart they serve really high quality food. Okay. Yes. Uh, it it's could be a lie when I say high quality, but they have ready meals that are good. They're not bull crap. Yeah. That yep, is true. agree. Yeah. Chicken here has been visiting Family Mart for a while. So what's your experience, man? Oh. My experience a lot of experience because it, when I touch down on KYA too, that's the first thing I'll always go visit. It's always go there. It's just like, oh, hey, uh, look look around and see what's good. And then maybe like get some onigiris or like the bentos. Like, you know, those like uh, ready meal preps, those kind. They mm-hmm. have like uh, all the nice ones, like hamburg steaks and uh, spaghettis. What else? Uh, uh, curry rice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, 
the chicken uh, tori katsu curry rice and then what else they have a lot of good stuff even like drinks like ramune and all those kind of things which when i was i was quite uh surprised when i went there i was like oh hey ramune the original bottle with the one with the marble, marble and i was like straight away go pay for it nice yeah like in lots of family mart store mostly they have lots of food to eat because family mart is mostly focused on the uh, ready to eat food like onigiri that that young told us about mm-hmm. bread sandwich they even have dim sum oh well. yeah yeah they have dim sum and also um the Odens, then the soft serve ice creams, yeah. steam, steam bun, they have lots and lots of stuff. Yeah, so and the drinks menu there, oh, it's a lot. Yeah, so yeah, that's why uh we here over at the south end of Malaysia. This is our mm-hmm. first family mart, and we are really hyped for it. And I bet you, uh, from the day that it opened, what it was like two weeks now, they have mm-hmm. been nonstop customers going for the Odens, and. All in all, Odin's are nothing special. It's just um, soup broth, uh, depending on what you want, and mm-hmm. some meat inside, um, fish cakes, uh, chicken, skewer. yeah, and so on. It's just that, really. It's nothing really special, but people here are very wowed. That what they, do you call it? Uh, curious? Curious. Yeah. Is that yes. you call it? A nice word is curious. Another word is jakun. <laughs> <laughs> or sakai, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, we call it sakai, though. Yeah, I, I got no idea what we call it for Thailand, but I, I guess you got a word for it. Uh, yeah, chicken. <laughs> I don't even know what those two means. What do you guys it, try? It means to... it's like when we go there, it's just like, oh my god, we finally have a shop there. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fangasming, yeah. I think that's the proper <laughs> yeah, term. Yeah, fangasm. Oh, foodgasm. <laughs> yeah, foodgasm. Yeah, or shopgasm. Uh, but the funny thing is that. It, it also not hap- just happened to you. Do you know that? What? <laughs> because here in the East Malaysia, for uh, where I am, um, Miri, mm-hmm. for example, we just recently opened a subway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, hey, we finally officially have subway. <laughs> All right. <laughs> because you know. in East Malaysia, there is only one place <laughs> that has subway, and it's all the way in Kuching. Oh, and that's it. And that was like for so many years. And finally, like, they opened one in Miri. And and you know what's the funny thing? What? The people is, uh, from the Sabah, Sabah state mm-hmm. was, like, questioning, why the heck do we don't have, like, Subway, but they open in Miri? Like, what the <laughs> heck? But the thing was, like, uh, it's this is managed by the Kuching branch. Because back then, there was a bit of a, what do you call it, some weird stories they say that it was a logistics problem or something uh, and then which is why they didn't bring uh it into the you know uh the eastern side of malaysia but but the thing is they they were having like one in uh kuching for some time now i mean we still don't have wendy's and the only one that was like available is in like kuching airport you know i, I never had wendy's before uh, never. here's the thing the milkshakes um... <laughs> I, I need to try that then. But no, but, but here's the thing about fast food chains or even uh, food chains like Family Mart. It all mm-hmm. based on the, per- the person serving it. Obviously, you're going to have the same taste all over. But if you go to a place that doesn't really serve top-notch food or the food is not up to the standard of the brand, it's going to suck. And yeah. I've been to my local Wendy's and their quality dipped down really hard. Then again, I did hear there was like, uh, back then when Singapore was having, uh, what do you call it, Wendy's, we, before they got shut down completely, they were also dipped down quite hard. Yeah, because like of motivation, like of QC and stuff. So yeah. I think it's the same as like how we go to KL, just like, hey, NW, let's do <laughs> situation. It's true though, like, I have uh we don't have A and the view uh close and uh, nearby. Wait, you have when we we have to drive out of oh, town yeah. to get to A and the view. And you know what the uh the sad thing about me uh we, we had uh, a year ago we had a subway uh-huh. opening in our nearby shopping mall. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It was great. But the sad thing is Thai people don't know what the That's f- not a word. It's subway. Oh no. <laughs> And they, they close down pretty quick because they they don't uh, they don't get that much profit. That's why they, they 
to shut it down. Oh no, it's advertising. Ouch. It's advertising. Yeah. They didn't really push it on the TVs and whatnot. Because, yeah. but you know what? I, I kind of understand because here, here's the thing. Uh, it's a cultural thing to say the least because we as Asians don't really eat sandwich as a main dish kind of thing. We mostly mm-hmm. have rice noodles or the mix in between. Or rice and noodles again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for Westerners, it's always pizza, sandwich, steaks, and so on. Yeah. So having Subway open to a location where people don't know what it is, or if people think about it like, oh, I'm just having a bread sandwich kind of thing, that's just stupid. So yeah. it's understandable. Luckily for mm-hmm. Malaysians... We kind of want to eat sandwich. Thai people don't uh, don't get exposed to that much of the uh, Western cultures and all that, so they stick to traditional stuff like rice, like yeah, like you said, tom no, yum, no, yeah. tom <laughs> yum. Yes, tom yum is boring <laughs> to me right now too. Like, True. I have it... that like every week. There will always be tom yum. But tom yum <laughs> is kind of a Thai dish, so it's like <laughs> how, how do I put this? Um. It will, it's similar to us Malaysians having uh, nasi lemak for breakfast or ah. lunch or dinner. And it's just like, oh, I just had it like a few hours ago. For a Westerner, that thing is uh, only edible at the fancy Asian store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I, could, that, that I could agree. And then when you go eat at the fancy Asian store, it doesn't taste nice. <laughs> We kind of did joke about it at TFE also. It was like, hey, uh, you want to go get Tom Yum Kung? <laughs> and I was like, no. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No Thai food, no Thai food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but still, but still. Um, uh, I, I think that's about it for me. Uh, besides family opening, uh, play games, uh, mostly Overwatch. Yeah, Overwatch is fun. Ooh, Overwatch. Yeah, I, I play the Overwatch. We should Overwatch. play that skin sometime. Yeah, I know. I I still have five more placement matches to go, so uh Same for me, I, I didn't play placement match that much. Yeah. So we need to do that. But anywho, um I think that's about it. So if you have any questions, concerns or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail dot com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Star away can the good people find you. People could find me on my DeviantArt, Angelico XX, or my Twitter account, Angelico XX, also. Awesome, awesome. And Chicken, where can the people find you? In DeviantArt as well, it's I go under the name Periodic Brony. Yeah. What happened to MG? That's the only way to get Yeah, not MG. MG is my name, but I, I use it as Brony. So <laughs> like, back then, being trying to be edgy, like <laughs> hiding my names and all that. Okay. <laughs> So that's all, DeviantArt? Yeah, DeviantArt. How about your Twitter? <laughs> yeah, Twitter is all, I'll go by under the name periodic underscore MG. Uh, I always, I use it quite often lately. Yeah, I, I saw that. I, I saw the retweets or the likes. Yay. Thanks, man. At least we did get retweeted by Ellie Ray. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's like what? Ellie Ray follows you? The heck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. But anywho, uh, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also stitch radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyofLife.com. Links are in the show notes. Also do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, talking about the Pony comics, episodes, and movies, and sometimes we like to talk about something else. Uh, though something else are kind of the miraculous debug that's something we like to talk about sometimes we like to talk about video games uh, video games like the overwatch and so on so if you're interested in that do subscribe to us over there if you like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com slash the mbs show with every support you get a week early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and talking about a thank you, i like to thank myself. Lag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Dr. Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. This is Starstream. 
flying chicken. And we'll guys catch you next week with a with a fun episode of your show. See ya. See ya. Bye.